Dr. Maxine Newlands, lecturer in political science at James Cook University, is here with us to unpack the week once again. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good morning. Yes, lots of high profile people around the north today yeah, and throughout been, the week. Yeah. We've been popular, haven't we? First of all, we had the opposition mint and shadow um, cabinet. And then, as you say, the Premier has been in town since uh, for four days since Monday. Yeah, lots of announcements. So a couple of interesting ones. Obviously, the copper string um, buyout. So we'll get to that in a sec, maybe. Mm. Um, but another one was uh, International Women's Day. That was celebrated with lots of um, local female leaders. Um, but also the announcement that the Premier will have a permanent office here. Um, down on Flinders Street East. So they've already, always had like a premier and cabinet um, sort of floor because there's quite a lot of government offices in Townsville. But now it seems to be that we may be seeing a lot more of her because she's going to actually, um, her and the cabinet will have a full time office here. Now what does that mean, though? I mean, what, how will an office work, given that for most of the time uh, when we're talking about our uh, parliamentarians, they're, they're, they're in state parliament mm-hmm. or they're going around elsewhere around Queensland. How does an office like this work? Well, it'll be the same in Brisbane. It'll have more presence. It'll mean that you'll probably expect to see the Premier or at least her representatives like the Deputy Stephen Miles um, at functions, mm-hmm. at events, just as we see in Brisbane. Obviously, the Brisbane, it's right next to um, the offices are, def- are next to the Parliament. So when it's parliamentary sitting weeks, we won't. But I think we can expect there be more engagement potentially, more kind of um, a familiar face. And some of this is, you know, building up to an election in 18 months time. We're in that window now. Um, but it's really just about having that presence. And and in the messaging that's been coming out is that Townsville will become a sort of sub hub of Brisbane. You know, it's a big city. It's the biggest city in the area. And so choosing to say we'll have an office and a presence is sort of acknowledging the role that Townsville has sort of north of the Tropic of Capricornia. Mm, but uh, for those listening uh, in, you know, the far north today, mm. could they be thinking, well, OK, hang on. If you're getting one in Townsville, why can't we have one in Cairns as well? What's stopping you from doing uh, these offices throughout Queensland? Well, that's a perfectly valid point. I mean, there's only one person and they can only go so wet, so far. Um, you know, there's been some criticism in the past that everything comes out the southeast corner. So I presume having a base and having a face in Townsville is a sort of um, it's one way of addressing that and saying, well, it's not just Brisbane. It's not just what's happening down there. It's actually up here as well. And, you know, logically, where the most people are, you get bigger bang for your book. People, yes, in Cairns, totally agree with you and out of Mount Isa and and what have you. But you've got um, people can now come to Townsville as opposed to having to go down to Brisbane. Yes. And when the uh, Premier was here the very first day, it also coincided with an issue where, um, you know, young offenders had Mm -hmm. uh, crashed into police cars and, uh, you know, lots of big headlines about that. At this issue of youth crime so very, um, you know, sensitive here in North Queensland. Uh, is it important that, you know, that is addressed? Is it important that they talk about it all the time? It seemed to me as if, um, you know, the, the Premier was getting a little bit annoyed being asked questions at the press conference when they had all these other things to announce as well. It keeps coming back to crime. Yeah, it does. And it's been something partly because not just the opposition, the, um, the shadow cabinet, but also like the Cata Party, you know, Nick Dometto from Hinchinbrook has been very much talking about this. It's been on people's mind, but people are experiencing it as well. Mm. And um, I think it's something that maybe they were hoping those measures about uh, bringing back the bail breaks and, sorry, the expression escapes me. Uh, those breach sort of bail. Of breach yeah. of bail, mm. you know, the announcement of a lot of money being spent on more correctional centres and more police and more community measures. I assume politically, if you're a politician, you would go, well, hopefully that'll quieten that down, just to be blunt. Any politician, I'm not saying these particularly per se, but when you put money at things it's sort of um, seen to appease so obviously there's a, a much more deep rooted issue going on here and it is as you say bright prominent in North Queensland in Townsville but we're also hearing about it statewide and in Toowoomba and other places so yeah there's that little bit of well hang on what can we do Yeah. Um, you know there's that politicking going on but it's not going to go away. I guess we'll stop talking about it when these incidents stop happening yep. basically uh, now you mentioned Copper String that was a big announcement with the state government actually taking that project yeah. on board 
board now. Yep. How significant is that? So very insignificant. So there's a couple of things uh, are really interesting about this. First of all, it's effectively an infrastructure project. So although the federal government are usually responsible for those big infrastructures, you know, so our roads, our schools, um, airports, that kind of thing, this is also a big infrastructure issue. Uh, and it's going to enable not only um, for the Queensland government to get to their renewable targets, which are very tight, it's 2030 and it's a reduction by 43%. So there's a lot to be done in a short period of time. Um, but it also will help open up those that renewables markets around things like nickel and cobalt, which is what's needed to make solar panels and to make a lot of uh, lithium batteries. And we know down with the Lansdowne precinct as well and those proposals, you know, that there's a need there for those minerals, not so much the fossil fuels. So very interesting in a way that the state has actually taken the step of buying a big infrastructure and $5 billion is mm. a lot of money, uh, really very clearly stating, you know, this is important to the state and it's important for progress and to hit those targets. And it doesn't seem to be that the federal government have been involved at all. So maybe as time goes on, if it becomes more expensive or it gets rolled out again, that's when we may see a 50-50 split with the feds. Yeah, certainly a lot of um, welcome um, faces that this week when they oh. heard the news about that finally happening after a lot of 10 years of talking yeah. about uh, Copper String 2.0. Dr Maxine Newlands is uh, talking to us this morning about politics. It's been a big week. Uh, the Prime Minister hasn't been around locally because he's been too busy preparing for that trip to India, headed over there just a couple of days ago and um, went to the cricket, yep. uh, as you do, <laughs> uh, that huge stadium, but also some very um, strong words about the uh, connection between Australia and India. Yeah, so lots of talk around education and there's a couple of universities, Australian universities are starting satellite campuses and talk around, um, you know, acknowledgement that Indian qualifications from Indian institutes will be recognised in Australia, which has a big effect on sort of um, brain drain and trying to address that skill shortage that we keep hearing about. So, but it's also a lot of geopolitics as well. Mm. You know, India are becoming a much more powerful player in that area, in the region, in the sort of... um, Indo-Pacific, it's not the best term, uh, but that they the sort of acknowledgement of that happening as well. You know, Indonesia as well, they're becoming quite powerful. Um, so it's really trying to build those collaborations. And there's a little bit of that, um, you know, China in the back of the mind, you know, more and more countries. So we can have alliances then when there's uh, tension with China that, you know, you want India now to sort of side. And, and then on top of that, you've got pictures of um, Anthony Albanese on billboards all over, haven't you? Incredible, the cricket, which yeah. Has almost like celebrity. Pretty At status. the Nehendra Modi Stadium. Yes. Imagine if we were calling our stadiums after our prime ministers or <laughs> premiers and things like that. I don't think that idea would be very popular oh, here, do you? Maybe the NCG or the SCG after Bob Hawke or oh, something. Really? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Not. I think that would be a very contentious move here. But uh, in India, it's a very different story. Yeah. And this is just the first step for the prime minister travelling overseas. He's also heading to the United States. Yeah, so off to, um, I think it's Michigan, I believe it's one of the US bases there, basically to talk about the AUKUS um, agreement, which is the, if you remember, you know, politics, everyone has a short memory. So it's the agreement between the US, Australia and the, and, um, the UK to get these submarines that kind of squeezed um, France out of the picture. Um, so really interesting that that's kind of doing the dotting the I's and crossing the T's on that arrangement. It does open up a whole conversation in Australia around nuclear and nuclear supply and nuclear... We, we're not a nuclear country. We are the only country I learnt recently um, in the world that actually has it mandated by law that we are a nuclear free country. So, you know, that's going to require a bit of a shift um, potentially from legislation because there's going to have to be infrastructure put in place to process you know, to work through all the kind of um, what comes with nuclear. I don't know. I'm not a nuclear, <laughs> I'm not a nuclear physicist. So Neither I am don't I. Know. Yes. But um, yeah, and that, so it seems to have sort of sorted out the problems with France because we upset the French um, under the Scott Morrison government. Um, so it'll be, let's see what comes out of this and whether, you know, it'll be for the benefit, particularly of um, Adelaide and South Australia, where they'll be being not built, but they'll be stored and they'll create jobs. Well, it's going to be a busy, interesting weekend uh, mm-hmm. watching all of that uh, happening. Magazine Newlands, thank you so much. Thanks. We will talk next week about politics unpacking the week. Dr. Maxine Newlands, lecturer in political science at James Cook University.